very much for joining me. Welcome back. Today is September 26, 2025. Were you woken up by that late night, early morning earthquake off of Bandon, Oregon? It occurred at 11.45 p.m. late last night or 6.45 a.m. Universal Time. I'm going to dive into what happened, how the community felt it, and what this means for our region's or your region's seismic activity. So let's get started. Social media mentions they confirm faint tremors in coastal areas like Coos Bay and even as far as Vancouver Island. But most residents slept through it due to its late night local time, like I said, 11.45 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time on September 25th. The earthquake occurred roughly about 150 miles off of Bandan, Oregon. There's location using Google Earth. It is a beautiful coastal town known for its scenic beaches. Yeah, I would love to live there. While the exact details like the magnitude are still being confirmed by USGS, this event occurred in the Pacific Northwest, a region that is no stranger to seismic activity. That is due to the proximity to the Cascadia subduction zone, which I have drawn out here in blue. It is one of the most significant fault systems in North America, and this fault is where the Juan de Fuca plate slides beneath the North American plate and is capable of producing powerful earthquakes. Uh, so every tremor in this area, yeah, does grab attention. This earthquake occurred along the Blanco Fracture Zone. Yeah, they've had a lot of large ones along here recently. Let me bring this back out. Um, this was a earthquake that caused uh, spreading. And there's been two aftershocks, both of them of magnitude 3.0. There is one. And then the other one a little bit farther to the north. But you can see this um, spreading center. Any earthquake does have a 10% chance of being a foreshock for something much larger. And many people do not realize that a larger event can come within um, even a month later. Yeah, a month later. So for within the next week, they're saying there's a possibility of a 3.0 or greater of a 61%. Well, they already had two. Um, a 15% of a magnitude 4 a 2% chance of a magnitude 5, a 1% chance of a magnitude 6, uh, or less than 1% chance, I should say, of a magnitude 7. Here is the moment tensor ball showing what way the fault moved. You can see we got spreading, and tension is applied going towards the east, right there. The first aftershock occurred at um, 12.22 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. One person said that they did feel it. USGS gave it a, uh, a depth of 10 kilometers. And that's because you need to triangulate um, earthquakes to get the exact depth. And they don't have monitors, um, seismic monitors out in the ocean. The second um, aftershock, uh, which occurred at 3.02 um, a.m. local time. One person said that they felt that one. The Blanco Fracture Zone is a highly active transform fault system extending about 200 miles offshore of the Pacific Northwest. And this zone makes the boundary where the Juan de Fuca plate slides past the Pacific plate, producing frequent moderate earthquakes. It is distinct from the nearby Cascadia subduction zone, about 200 miles east, which is a mega thrust fault capable of producing a magnitude 9.0 earthquake. Are you prepared for such a large earthquake? Once again, that's that line drawn out in blue. Today's earthquake is not directly linked to the Cascadia's big one. No aftershocks above a magnitude 3.0 have been reported, but monitoring continues. So did anyone feel this earthquake? The USGS, did you feel it? website is still open so you can send in your report they collect reports from people who experience the earthquakes and it does help map out shaking intensity 
And given the offshore location of this quake, it's likely that shaking was minimal to Bandon itself. Coastal residents may have felt light shaking or heard, heard some strange noise. Did you hear anything strange late last night or early this morning? If so, please put your comment down below. The Cascadia subduction zone is a 600-mile fault running from Northern California to British Columbia. This fault is notorious for its potential to produce mega-thrust earthquakes, though today's event appears to be smaller. Um, the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network does monitor this area very closely, and their data shows frequent low-level seismic activity offshore. And understanding these faults help us prepare for larger events. So staying informed is the key. This isn't your everyday tremor. The epicenter sits squarely in the Blanco Fracture Zone, a notorious transform fault, once again where the Pacific and the Juan de Fuca plates grind sideways against each other. And again, is one of the most seismically active areas in the region. And you can see a lot of the quakes that I got marked out here. Look at them all. Oregon's emergency management and myself urge preparedness. You need to secure your space. Know your evacuation routes and have a go bag ready. Don't forget shoes, hiking shoes, in case you have to walk out or get out really fast. Um, a lot of times when there's large earthquakes, there's a lot of debris blocking roads and exits. Earthquakes like this does remind you to stay prepared. Uh, don't forget to practice drop cover and hold on. Secure your heavy objects in your homes. Yeah, bolt those bookcases to the wall. Hot water heaters to uh, the uh, frames of your house. And definitely keep an emergency kit ready. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Yeah, please remain vigilant. Like I said, you could have a large one a month later. Please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And as always, be safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all.